Okay, so we are back with Green ID. It was requested from the chat to go over... We're going to try to not overlap too many quests between Yellow ID, which we did earlier, and Green ID. Uh, I do recommend that there are a couple quests that are worth doing across multiple IDs. So if you have not watched, in particular, episode 4 Yellow ID, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about there. Otherwise, we're going to go with one of the standard reasons to play Green ID, and honestly, it's just going to be TTF. But I promise you after that, we're going to do some quests that are not necessarily played as much to talk about why you would potentially want to go into those. Let's go ahead and play the music here. So let me know, chat, if you want to hop in. We'll give you another 30 seconds or so, because I know there's a stream delay. So the reason why green ID is kind of an awkward ID, like it's really good, but it very specific things. So let's talk about their episode one rares while we wait for people to trickle in. So in Forest, they get Star Amplifier and Frozen Shooter from Hilt Bears and Hilt of Wars, which is okay. Uh, they also get access to Red Handgun from Tallow, which is not bad. They're one of the few IDs that gets a Shuren from Caves, but to be honest with you, they're probably the worst of the choices for caves. I guess if you're really desperate for accuracy units, God Arm on the way to uh, the Worm Boss is okay for newer players. Otherwise, your only real highlight in Green ID for caves is Holy Ray. Up next, you have an okay Mines. You have access to parts of Barans, which is great for Rangers if you don't have them already. B101, Solid on Sinnoh Blues. And they also get Kasambi Bracer as a really off-chance leader unit, which is okay for Hunters before you get Red Rang. Nothing interesting from the boss. Nug 2000 Bazooka is your uber rare. Nothing too crazy. Green ID in Ruins, though, has the Jito 1975 and Del Sabers. Chaos Sorcerer gets Psycho Wands. They also get access to Monkey King Bar from Chaos Springers, which is fantastic. Indie Belras get Heavenly Arms, amazing. Cure Paralysis from Bulk, honestly, not a lot of good choices in Bulk. And they also get Spread Needle and Red Ring. So Ruins is probably one of their strongest pieces overall when it comes to Episode 1. But what people end up doing is that because it's good enough, people will end up running TT up with it. So I don't see anybody else joining us, so I guess we're just gonna go ahead and duo this. So Green ID is kind of an interesting pick. There's not too many things I would use it in Episode 2 for. So if you are potentially a Force, or potentially a Cast, not even necessarily a Ranger, I think it's not too hard to play Green ID in most places, as long as you're semi-comfortable with the game. A lot of your really good runs are actually in Episode 4, but TTF is good enough that it'll carry you to do basically whatever you need. I'm actually using one of the new charge arms that Hellcleave helped me acquire. Thank you, Hellcleave, for giving me access to your weapon store. <laughs> so that 15% dark might be more relevant later. When in doubt, Ranger can probably do whatever. They're not very strong at tower, although they do have some interesting murder flower kills. So while I'm not really looking to do a full bone tower quest, there's actually a very specific reset that they can do, since they're one of the only people that can get V502 outside of tower, which is kind of neat. I would say that's pretty unique to Green ID, because a lot of people normally have to fight ill gills for it or equally really horrible monsters, but there's just a very easy, quick reset, honestly. As long as you get a Frozen Shooter, you should be fine, which this ID also gets by completing Forest. So again, all potential rares you can see on your way towards uh, dealing with these enemies. I love that I think our ATP is so high that Hellcleave might just kill it without Zalur. I'll be honest with you. Especially if we get the glitch. Oh, he's alerted. We'll never know. We'll go on wanting and wanting and thinking about it. Run, Hellcleave, run. Oh, I like that exit to the south. Because it seems the stomp does not affect backwards as much. That's good to know. I assumed it was more radial, but honestly, Hellcleave just ran away from the rear. And that dodged it pretty well. 
<laughs> the party must go on. That's about right. Let me sort my inventory a little bit. I got one escape doll, which is probably fine. Sadly, I, there's no point to slime duping with them. I don't think they get any interesting slime rares. We'll double check real quick. No, they get something called Morning Glory, which is whatever. So I can I can frozen shooter it if I want. But I don't really want to. We're gonna go for the cold and calculated clear. I'm actually gonna use Yashminikov here for multi-damage over the Heaven Striker, so I don't have to use sacrifice for damage. I like that the Ranger could just choose how they win today. Yeah, this Yashminikov has a little bit of machine dark and more importantly hit percentage. So with the Ramar, he's basically never missing. Although what I can do is now that I set up Hellcleave in this room, I'm going to kill the prior room just for XP. And then I'm going to move to the next area. We might get something of interest here. We'll see. Just doing a quick lowly check. I figure it's better than just waiting around. Might be able to get a couple cheeky kills with the... Oh, I don't have Frozen Shooter. That's fun. We'll move forward and wait for Hellcleave. So we have the benefit of Cannon Rouge plus Excalibur. So we'll do okay on this boss. I can't stun lock it with the uh, Excal because he doesn't have V801 equip. In a couple levels, I think he can use it permanently, which will be nice. And thanks to my high accuracy, I could basically just heavy special special, even without having any accuracy on Excal. This character is basically a big cheater, is what I'm telling you. So yeah, potentially Holy Ray is sometimes useful here. Without a cast, we're pretty much just going as fast as we can through these. I have Red Ring on and Virus Armor, so my defense is pretty high. So even if we just have my level buffs and no debuffs, it should just be good enough. And you can see that our Yashminikov has a little bit of machine percentage, which I think actually makes enough of a difference to one combo, though. Which is very funny to me. Nice event egg. I'm gonna move ahead for Hellcleave. If I really need to, I could just quickly Yashminikov. I don't need to worry about it. Unlike Yashminikov for the sniper range with Vulcan, lets me potentially out damage Heaven Striker where I'm, where I'm out of range of the sacrifice special. Because that's what makes Heaven Striker worth using. So being able to just output my ATP, which is already pretty high, is pretty good. I guess we should probably kill these. We are a green ID. So sadly, without a cast, they do bully a little bit, but thanks to the debuffs and high defense, I don't have too much to worry about here. excited because I saw an item drop, but it was just a Kapoe. That's unfortunate. Talcleaf's managing to control them with the debuffs. I think that's where Ramar struggles a little bit. If you don't have the S ranks, you sometimes just don't have the right tools to quickly burst. I feel Sinnoh's is one of their worst matchups. Single Sinnoh, not a problem. Four Sinnoh's, sadness. I'm gonna go for the uh, Bazook Strat.
Thank you, Roll HP. One of the only times I'm happy to have you, specifically against Barans. If you pass the threshold, you might as well go higher. I'm gonna go for the stunlock, and let's hope that he's got zaps out, then I'll let him zap zap. Otherwise, it's Spread Needle City. It looks like I'm gonna get not a one cycle here. Gotta be really careful. Nice. Why is he aiming so far? Stop that. Look at your target. Whoa, game lag. Weird. I feel like the game has been behaving weirdly lately. I'm not really sure why that is. Do that and see if it behaves itself more. Oh, almost killed it in time. So close. My Rizan doesn't even reach. That's so sad. <laughs> that Rizan, that Rizan barely even hit the center of the arena. That was just sad. Oh man, that was something. I'll let Hellcleave deal with this. I think. I'm gonna go out this way. I'll stunlock the Darkbringer slightly though. So let Hellcleave go up. I'm gonna go for the Sorcerer. I'm gonna do my little zigzag pattern, which should work. Oh, I saw that immediate attack. You're not supposed to do that, cheater. So because I went fast enough there, he actually doesn't teleport. Fun fact. I like that strat. I'll cleave Ode. Durandal 55 hit. Oh. I thought I'll cleave was impressed by the uh, no teleport strat by getting there fast enough. Some people don't even know they could do that. I like that if I don't bring Frozen Shooter. Here's an example of why I like the Yashminikov. Fine. This is gonna be a very awkward kill. Hopefully I could kill fast enough. Ooh, it's like a little shy. Got him on the rebound though. Tempted to pick up that level shift, uh, but that's fine. So our goal here is to just equip Heaven Striker to one-shot the uh, little spinners. I think I have escaped all. It's better than nothing. Hellcleat coming in with debuffs is actually super useful here. Yeah, I, I know Hellcleat's feeling on that B801. Eventually, I need to get more. It's one of those things where, like, I, it's not like I don't play Pink ID. I mean, how many times have we done Pink ID Cookie just this year alone? Just unfortunate it hasn't appeared yet. Rip Hellcleave. I am not that close to Hellcleave to revive. Oh, he has escaped all. So we're gonna do one bullet and then move. Man, I feel like they're really heat-seeking me. Not that. So, if we're not sure if we can out-DPS, I could technically focus my blasts on the center head. It really just depends on how good health these damage is. Mine should be okay. I'm just gonna go for closest target here. I don't trust that spinner. Okay. We took it mostly safe to get rid of the spinners. It's always a little tricky with just two people.
Here's an example. I'm going to switch back to Yashmindikov because I'm going to do more damage. Uh, that could be really bad. Rip Hell Cleave. That bag invincibility though. Come to me. Did I seriously shoot the spinners over the boss? Can please just perish? <laughs> it's like both spinners body blocked. They they were the ultimate bodyguards on that one. The boss was like within an arm's length of me, and they still body blocked that. That was insane. Six bullets. They somehow ate. And again, because I'm able to hit from the beginning, it does good damage. Although, if I'm able to, I'd like to Heaven Striker. Help out of range. So I'm just going to use some Pew Pew. Really unfortunate that that's full screen. I'm going to Foey here. Uh... I might mag bless this, I'll think about it. This might allow me to punish the boss. That kind of works. Oh damn, I died instantly. Rip me. That's impressive that I died at the same time as the boss. Think about think about how fast that damage was that I died to that. That's crazy. Thank you, Scape Doll. <laughs> That's why you bring one. I'm getting that XP chat. I died for the cause. We're just refusing to look at each other when I died, <laughs> Scape Doll. I get a couple of those. Oops. Hmm. Oof. Nothing of interest. That shift to level 30 is a bit sad to leave behind. I do have a lot of buffs currently, so I need to eventually just say no to some of those. Hmm. I think if I'm going to do another quest, I think I need the, uh, the frozen shooter. They put away some items. There we go. Liberating. Ooh, 20 hit frozen shooter. I can't say no to you. Oh, he doesn't have his own, uh... doesn't. Well, I mean, I guess I could use my share bag hit version of the Slicer Fanatic. I'll need that for later. I don't need it, like, literally right now, but I'll, I'll wear it anyway. Hmm. I thought he had an all-zeroed one already. Well, I'll have to make sure to hold on to one of those for later. They're easy enough to farm, at least. So we're gonna do a little bit of Endless Nightmare 3 into 4. Just because we did go through uh, the Retrieval Quest of Mines in yellow, which is really good. But I feel like the less Barans you have to deal with and the less Red Sinnohs you have to deal with, the better. Oh, welcome, Dango. So let's do a little stroll through Mines. For those looking to maybe farm a V101 outside of TTF, which honestly, TTF is also a really good way to get V101, just because it's so quick to get to it. So I figured we're doing just an alternate thing, just because we haven't really done this quest before. I think from the standpoint, you can just immediately clear the dark room and leave, no problem, help leave, which gives you five, so it's potentially a very fast reset, or you clear the quest for 49. Which I think at this point we might as well just clear it. 
Otherwise, the way I've gotten most of my red, or not red rings, most of my V101s on green ID have seriously just been from TTF, because both of them get it. But hey, maybe you're looking for more for other characters, so you might as well learn this one. Yeah, the other quest we did on Yellow ID, Lost Soul Blade, is fantastic to only do the first level of mines. But I figured we'd give some other quests a shot, give them a chance. Oh, the song's kind of fun. Apparently it's Submarine. So we'll let Hellcleave shuffle some stuff around. Welcome back, Dango. And then we'll go into probably a more well-known quest that I think most people should also learn to do, in particular if you're looking to hunt Del Sabers. Endless Nightmare 4 is a classic. I don't actually recommend clearing the quest. The first floor is so powerful that most people just do the first floor and leave. You could go further in the quest, don't get me wrong, it's, it's fine. The ending is a little rough for newer players. But the first floor itself, with all the healing circles and everything else like that, it's pretty generous. I would say just if you're gonna play Force into this, it is really hard to do Ruin runs. So if you are interested in some of the Ruin runs, I would consider not being a Force and multiplayer for Green ID. Just because they can't really damage a lot of these enemies without any kind of gear. Literally, Chaos Springer is near immune to you, it's kind of sad. But yeah, there's just so many opportunities in order to get these things. So anything really high in Del Sabers and also potentially things like Monkey King bars from Chaos Bringers are really good. Hellcleave has arrived. Yeah, if you're looking to do Chaos Bringers, that's usually where you end up clearing Endless Nightmare 4. So we might as well showcase the quest a little bit. But usually if I'm doing resets for things like Swordsman lore, which sadly this one doesn't have, but it does have Ubers, I would just do the first floor. It's also pretty useful to do that quest if you're looking to do your find your own uh, Heavenly Arms, because there's a very large number of Indie Belra at the end of the quest. That's honestly also not really hard to reach. This quest will sometimes- I think this quest can enter rotation in RBR. Jack, correct me if I'm wrong. So I, I like to mix it a little bit. It's not technically the most or fastest way to do it, but it's really good with everything else. So I just end up teaching Endless Nightmare 4 to new players. I'll leave us arrived as a force. So we'll do a couple of these. I don't do Endless Nightmare 3 as much because there are slightly better options. In particular, if you're yellow ID, you won't really pick this one since you're looking for high number of Barans and this one doesn't have it. But hey, if you're playing a human character like me, I don't really want to deal with a lot of Barans. I just want to deal with very limited Sinnoh. However, that doesn't mean that they aren't in the quest. <gasps> the cannabin blocking my free shot. That was so sad. I got outplayed. Chat GG. I need to retire. I got body blocked again. <laughs> so sad. I think the switch is there. Good call. So yeah, thanks to Helpfully being here, I could potentially just berserk all day long, which definitely ups the damage. As I said before, this quest is okay. Get the uh, switch out of the sky. Take a couple of these. Uh, Cannabin is that way. Which I think it's Kasami Bracer. There's these things which we can pop open. Cannabins everywhere. So we're looking for the room that we normally reset on. So not this way for the reset room. I'll cleave just soloing all the cannabins. His godlike powers cannot be contained in one room.
Photon drop, nice. I'll cleave with the fantastic Rabarda Ing. Acting is our stand in freeze trap. Take a look at what's at the end of this corridor. Just boxes. So Cleave is slowly making his way towards that center room again. Somewhere is the quintuple Sinnoh Blue. That's the room I'm looking for. I see the switch on the other side. So sadly, it looks like we went slightly out of order there. So if Hellcleave hits that, then I will be- yep, exactly. Then I'll be able to cross through here, and I can get to the warp. Yeah, that's the downside of not playing a quest for a while. You forget the, the little nuances. Then I can get Hellcleave back here with the Ryuker, so he doesn't have to walk back. I found the fake button with my face. It's my favorite way to find it. Oh, Hellcleave ran instead of telepiping. Hellcleave's like, nah. Yeah, so this is the room you normally reset in. So not a very long run. Not super hard if you're solo. There's not like a crazy amount. Like the that amount of Sinnohs is kind of annoying, but not like the end of the world. So there you go. That, that would be the run, but we might as well just complete the quest since we're here. Mmm, dark rooms. I feel bad I don't have my Lieutenant Mandel on. It would help maybe a little bit with the quest. Lots of victory music. I'm assuming we're near the end of the soundtrack. Or maybe not. I never understand why people order the song stuff like that. Even more Sinnohs. Okay. Nicely done. I'm really surprised I dodged that trap, to be honest with you. I feel like that should have hit me. I don't know if somebody shot it, or if I did actually manage to just barely dodge it. Thank you, auto-aim. I love you. Never change. Literally, please don't change targets. Let's go this way. I mean, I can combo kill with this thing. So again, it's just... If this thing had just a little more accuracy, I'd be able to heavy special special. Like, sadly, even just like 5% accuracy would have been huge. 15% I think means I can heavy special special literally every enemy here. Which is kind of bonkers. I don't think I should be allowed to do that, but that's Ramar for you. Red switch, which is a trap. Okay. <laughs> Operation look for the Sinnohs. No, not over here. Oh, it's one of the split rooms. Okay. Man, that is just so strong. Heaven Striker, please. Chat's, I think, finding the Sinnohs. I'm gonna clear this side of the room. So when chat comes over here, they don't have to worry about this side. And again, I mean, he's just able to just combo kill them. It's That's all you really want, honestly. So there's a door there, but it requires a switch to be hit. The switch can be hit from the other side. Okay. On the plus side, we've killed most of the enemies. So at some point, should probably leave a telepipe down. So that way, since I'm here early, if the team comes in from the other door, they could just take my telepipe. But because we need to go further forward, we gotta go this way. So we need to somehow open up that red door for progress. Is there a switch over here? 
Ah, uh, the pick a button. It's my favorite mini game. I did not pick the right button. There we go. <laughs> button detained. So now, if Chad ends up telepiping, we could take my telepipe since it's on the other side. That'll save us a little bit of a walk. So even though we haven't really played the quest in quite some time, you know, we could kind of notice these things as we play, which is always nice. What happened to the music? Oh. It is completed, apparently. And now for Bomberman 64. Not to be confused with Bomberman 64. This is the 2001 Japanese-only version, which has nothing to do with the other one. It's more traditional Bomberman versus the actual 3D one. Killed you. I think that's all of them? So I'll wait by my work. So there's a blue laser gate over here. I don't it might be needed to get to the central room, so I'm gonna hit it. And just in case, I'm gonna put a telepipe back over here in case we gotta go back to the central room. And there's no warp. But it does look like we warped. Pfft. Why hello there. Thank you, auto aim. I don't need to find them. You'll find them for me. Truly, I have mastered the darkness. Just combo kill everything. See? Combo kill. Combo kill. Sinnoh Red's near me. I guess I should disrespect Roberta. Can you imagine? I did actually freeze something there, I think. I may try fluid heal. Operation, let the game aim. Oh, there's a brand near me? That's not good. Uh... Build you. That was a little bit of a rude surprise. I don't think I like that surprise. 2000, GG, deleted. So there's the warp to continue further. So what was the point of the other blue warp? Was it just to open this area up for items? I'm just trying to understand what the flow, the logic of the quest was. Yeah. Oh, so I don't... I guess if I wanted to go back to the central room, I think I could? I don't want to, but I guess that's what that was for. Because I remember there was a blue laser gate in the middle, so I'm assuming you teleport there to get items. Into each their own, I suppose. Damn, I think I two shot that Varans like straight up. Thank you, Heaven Striker. Just do 3k, it's easy. I should probably charge arm a little. Now that they're all within clear and easily aimable surface areas, versus like nested away in corridors. Kill a couple of these, back to Heaven Striker. Heal my HP. Oh my gosh, I got the freeze. That was just. He combo kills Sinnoh Red in multiplayer? That's gross. Chat, please nerf this character. <laughs> I'm full screen combo killing, come on. Or mid screen at least. Oh, that's a lot. There we go. There's the blue Sinnohs we want to see. Disrespect Freeze, love to see it. Ooh, this room looks a lot like- oh, this room is so fun. I, I would have loved this with a cast. This is definitely a tricky room without, uh, traps. But forces, oh, horses would have so much fun in single player here. Multiplayer, not so much. Damage high. So I could see myself doing this if I didn't want to fight a lot of Barans. There's like a, there's like one room that's maybe a problem room, but 
We're getting a little demons. I mean, your reward for getting past that room is this, so... Definitely high reward. There's a lot of Sinos. I wish the, I wish there were more rooms like that. That was a fun room. Let's continue further forward. Sinos are randomly somewhere. There's guild chicks. Items. We might as well check the boxes. I don't think there's anything too crazy in terms of box rares. I'll cleave soloing some Sinnoh blues. We believe in you, Hellcleave. Oh, can I shame kill him with Rivarda? Oh, I was so close. Imagine dying to Ramar, Rivarda. That's the that has to be the worst way to go. The shame is eternal. Yeah, all that for I had a feeling. I feel like most of the time you see like a double Sinnoh room. It just leaves the treasure, but you might as well check it, I guess, for PDs, if nothing else. It doesn't even matter what the box rare is. On the off chance. Oh, that's a very Bomberman theme. I can unlock a shortcut here, which is kind of interesting. So there's like some kind of like splits that are intended. It's still like a kind of an old school version of the split. Not my favorite version of it, but at least I could see where like one team could go fight the two and then they telepipe back kind of things. Or they open shortcuts if they don't have telepipes. I could kind of see it. It's not like a confusing mess of tele telepipe warps, which is one that gets me a little upset. We see those sometimes in other quests. I think the only time I've liked the warp separation so far has been Penumbral Surge. The quest was really, 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 really good. This quest is like pretty easy to follow. None of the rooms are super difficult to navigate. So if I really wanted to learn this quest, I could probably learn it. Like one more attempt. Most of it is straightforward. And again, if I see a room like this and we don't get Baranz, I would be very shocked. We're just gonna preemptively pull out my frozen shooter. Oh. Or or quadruple Sinnoh Blue. That's also fun. Why hello there. I like that there's three in front and then one from behind to cut you off from escaping. I like that. That's a fun pattern. So yeah, you don't play these quests for XP, you play them for the uh, raw enemy kills. So not a quest I would level on. There's a warp in the middle of the floor. Interesting. So yeah, I like, I like the second floor a little more than the first floor currently. I think the first floor just had like really long rooms and not enough enemies in them. Meanwhile, floor two was like... I know we don't take it. I think so. Yeah. I like the delay. They're like, oh, did you think you're done with the room? See, these are the kind of rooms I like. I don't mind having a little bit of a walk if it means like an absolute massacre afterwards. Ooh, event egg, finally. Okay. We're gonna take this safety scape doll, we're gonna bring some evade material, and I guess I will take the warp. I will brave it for the chat. I'm gonna make sure it's also not one of those quests where I touch the door. Oh, I remember that quest from the earlier quest. Let's see where it takes me. Probably Baran's if I had to guess. <laughs> I'm getting ready to turn around. There's a warp out of here. So what is the point of this room? It just brings me back here. And this warp brings me back here. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm assuming we have to go back here. Ooh, the camera button. So I think you can enter this room early. Yeah, make sure you step on the camera button. Yeah, okay, so it was this quest where you have to touch the door, okay. I was like, I know there's a couple mines quests where you have to do that. So I'm glad, hopefully you figured that out. I was like, one of these doors you touch, I swear. Oh, I froze that guy mid-jump. Get wrecked, idiot. <laughs> uh, There's the Sinnoh Blue. Yeah, with me and Dango there with the Zalore. 
He survived a single hit from both of us. GG. I'm gonna shoot the dub switch. It's gonna heal so I don't die there. Do some AoE damage here into Heaven Striker nonsense. Speaking of which. <laughs> I don't need to frozen shooter them if you kill them. There we go, there's my motto. Dead is the ultimate debuff. Uh, I'm gonna shoot that. So I mostly just gotta look out for the Sinnoh Blue ambush. Sure, I don't get one shot. So I just gotta heal every now and then with my sad Ramar Resta, and then I think we're fine. It is actually somewhat relevant here, just so I don't get one shot. Oops. Wasn't sure where they were at first. Kind of a fun final room. So yeah, not super confusing. Small opportunities for optimization with multiple players. I'm gonna rotate in circles here so I don't die. Okay. Yeah, that was fine. You know, it's not like the it's not like the best quest in the world, but I'm happy we experienced it. There's the exit and some chests. Of our little reward for succeeding. We're definitely gonna sort our inventory. I'm gonna restock. I picked up a Grants 20 for some reason. I did like making active use of my healing items, just to try to get through and cheese some things. Wait, did I buy those? I did, okay. I was, I was paranoid. I menued a little too quick for me to register. Get rid of these, delete these. Then we're gonna do the ruins quest. I really like this quest at the end because if you have a ranger in particular, it's very easy. And honestly, if you only do the first floor of multiplayer as a force, it's also really easy. It's more the second floor that's kind of pain in the butt. I think it's like a little too tricky for new players, but that first floor of Endless Nightmare 4 is really fun. That's one of the ones I used to do a long time ago. That's how I got, I think, I you know, not mean to try fluid there. That's one of those ones where I think you can probably just do it pretty er at low-ish levels. Like, I wouldn't do it at level 80, but you don't have to be like 150 plus either. So yeah, let's do a little bit of Endless Nightmare 4 just to showcase it. This is a quest that I think is worth learning across multiple IDs. It happens to be useful in green if you want to do full clear or partial clear. It's a little stronger if you are if you have Del Saber rares, but it's still good enough to the point that I'd still recommend it on green. So we'll give chat a moment. Is there anybody else that would like to hop in for the fourth slot? It is mostly free experience. So we'll sort through. Don't think I need anything else there. We're not going to be doing too much in episode 2, I think. Just because of the fact that their rares are kind of... Eh. So if you really want to play episode 2, I really don't recommend it. Unless you're doing Miracle Resets, which is very unique to the, the green ID. Okay. I don't see anybody saying anything, but I'll give another courtesy 10 seconds or so. So I think it's just the three of us again. 
Now this quest does show up in uh, RBR. And when it does, it's actually really nice. This is one of those quests where like, I used to run this a whole ton. So I remember the first floor pretty well, including the fake Del Saber path and the healing circle. So I like that if you are a cast, you have some options here. But for the most part, we're just gonna bully start to finish. There's like, a lot of people will do, uh, what is it called? Anguish 10 on this difficulty to kill the claws since they drop weapons, apparently guaranteed. If they're gonna drop something, something like that. But yeah, you'll do the claw resets. And then you'll check these boxes. So let's go check the boxes. And again, it's a lot of ruined weapons. Ruined weapons are pretty good. So it's not bad to check those during the quest. Then up next, we just have mostly claws. Like, the beginning of the quest is very simple. And again, very force tailored, I would say, at least the first floor. Not so much the second floor. Second floor is a nightmare for forces. It, it lives up to Endless Nightmare for four forces. And I feel bad for Hellcleave, because I have no idea what Hellcleave is going to do in that final floor. Rip Hellcleave. In the meantime, Hellcleave can just do these. The boxes are weapon boxes. Nice, nice. So yeah, we're, we're getting kind of mixed of money and stuff. So yeah, people will just do this on Anguish 10 and reset repeatedly. We're doing it as more of the intended difficulty. But that's a good thing to have in your back pocket specific to Infinia. We're literally it's just one force spamming nothing but trifluid refilling on claw resonding. That is a hilarious amount, because you can see like the only enemy we're fighting is Claw. There were a couple of people that used to stop by the stream that used to swear by this as their leveling method. Hopefully they are doing well. Hmm. This one is kind of interesting. I don't think most of the boxes are worth unlocking, but what I can do, I just do a quick check here, and if we don't need to do it, we don't need to do it. Basically, there's a door back there, which chat will do, which will undo one set of laser gates. And then uh, the other one, I think, is behind the waterfall. So if we really need to do it, I'll showcase it. I mean, I'll probably showcase it anyway. But, you know, just one of those ones where... This room is also kind of interesting because you can actually delay the spawn of the sorcerer as well as the Indie Belra. So if you just want to play a sniper, this is really good. I'm going to show you what happens if we go back here, let the team deal with that. So you can see these extra boxes here, and if the team now needs to go back for items, laser are getting undone. So I like that, like, if you do take a small detour, there's some rewards in the quest. It's a quest that feels a little basic, I guess, in some ways, but basic isn't necessarily bad. So again, most enemies here and ruins are pretty good for green ID. I would say it leans a little more heavily towards the ruins 2 side if you want to enjoy green ID specifically. But things like these Indie Belros are pretty easy to pick apart, which will give you your first set of Heavenly Arms, potentially. So anyway, let's continue forward. <laughs> Bull Claws for Red ID. Slash uh, Yellow. I'm just gonna freeze these solid. More Heavenly Arm chances, excellent news for your Ranger to be, or even honestly Force, looking to throw some stuff. So this favors people with at least a pistol. I would not do this quest with anything other than a pistol as a hunter. Slicer is very tempting for groups like this, and by all means go ahead, but there are enough Indie Belros that it becomes unfun very quickly. Just due to the fact you're very likely to get messed up in Ultimate. If you play this below Ultimate, it's not too bad. So I believe we're coming up to our first split decision path. So there are a lot of optional areas, so just keep in mind... <laughs> Speaking of which, keep in mind which ones are useful. So based off of what you're specifically hunting, take a look. So that opens up this optional area up here. Now it's going to the main route down here. We can see there's a little light switch we, which we can hit. Essentially, you're doing this to maybe fight just for XP. It's okay. It's more claws for Phonuman. There's usually a lot of claws and Del Saber in the other room. I'm just going to continue focusing on this clear. 
So as soon as I go in this room, I believe I'll get ambushed on the way out. But just want to showcase potentially some good items in here. See, there's lots of armor and weapons. Sadly, though, the way out then becomes a trap. Which I think is nice from the standpoint if you're just looking for more XP. So if the team ends up putting down a telepipe, I'll just zip to them in a moment. I'm just clearing this out while I'm able to. And again, this is what I'm talking about. Team can make like a split decision. So I'm gonna go ahead and telepipe out. Chat will give me a TP. Hi, I see one. I'm gonna take it. Oh, chat is here. Let's go closer for the buffs. So the, so the chat basically went left one room, down one room. So right below us is a healing circle, which is extremely good. And if you're looking for characters that have swordsman lore, which not all characters do, uh, from the Dell Sabers, you'll take the upper path. If you want to make progress, you make the door to the right. I was going to say, surprisingly, this is a quest that I mostly know. Usually I'm kind of shaky on quests, but this one, and I've, I've done it enough. So I'll just showcase the healing circle down here as proof. I guess since Green ID is a Jito, we could do the optional kill for the, uh, what's it called? The Del Saber. What that does is basically, if you look at the map, this door will eventually go right and hook up with the door we saw up there. So we did skip a couple rooms, which is a bit unfortunate for the map. But uh, yeah, there's a couple claws here, and I think just like two Del Sabers or something, or one Del Saber. So we'll kill a couple of these. There's a lot of traps here. I'm gonna take it very slow. But essentially, once we're done with this hallway, we just turn around. There's no point to going further. It just loops, loops back. There's not even anything to fight. That's more if you like forgot items. You could go back the w that way and open up a back portal or whatever. But anyway, let's progress this way. So we're given another split path. If you go up north, that'll lead to progress. We'll showcase the optional room, I guess, to the right. So let's go to the optional room. Do a couple boxes here and there, a couple Merlins. Most of the optional rooms are dark rooms, which could be kind of annoying, but whatever. So again, for characters that get a uh, spread needle from Merlins, which is quite a few of them, uh, this is a nice little side room to take. If you get nothing on Merlins, probably skip this room. The photon drop tees in a room full of things I want. That is so sad. Yeah, we happen to get spread needle from Merlins, so for us it's mostly worth it. And we also get stuff from Sorcerer, which is nice, and Del Saber. So this room, I think, overall is worth it for Green ID. Not a very big room, and as I said before, if people end up splitting up, uh, usually somebody can put a warp back in the main room if you want. I probably should have mentioned that to the team. That would be my fault. Having run the quest before and actually remembering it. The final room in this one is fantastic for Indie Bellra. I think there's at least 12 or something ridiculous right at the end. I tried counting once. You'll understand where I got a little confused, because they come in little bits of waves, back to back to back to back to back to back. Uh, there are basically two ways to go here. Both of them lead to the same destination. One of them leads to this destination with items. I believe Hellcleave is going to open up the final button. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe this is the shortcut. If this is not the shortcut, I will know very shortly because we will not receive items. So let's see if we've taken the right path. We have indeed taken the shortcut. So the nice thing about the shortcut, just a couple items, and then it leads you back to the room with the enemies anyway. So if you don't want to do that and you go the other way, we all meet in the same place. And then I can open this up for people that take the other route. Look kind of nice. So see how Cleave is coming in through the room with Dango. So if they need to get items, I just did that real quick. Might as well as Demon Yo. Yeah, we're not as interested in the Del Ds. They just have like very mediocre armor. When we see the purple creatures, that then we think spread needle for green ID. 
So we get excited for these. We don't care about the LDs. Oh, here we go. This is a perfect spawn. Four spread needle chances, one heavenly arm. So we're coming up to what I like to call the marathon room. I started near the indie bell row so I could get some easy hits on him while team deals with the others. The Marathon Room essentially is going to spawn a whole bunch of Indie Belra after I think four or five total waves. And at that point, everybody will be in uh, stop-go mode, so I hope you have a really good range weapon. Or in the case of Hell Cleave, zap zap everything, because it's funny. Gun those things down. So yeah, this room is going to be a lot of waves, so definitely come prepared into this room. There's going to be all sorts of Belras. You can already see tons of spread needle chances again. This is kind of the payoff. When you complete this room, this is where a lot of people reset if they're not interested in like Chaos Springer, or they don't have a really strong party. So what I would recommend is to not stay very close to your group of friends. Because within a couple waves of this, the Indie Bell Rose should start to spawn. So since I'm in the corner, I should be mostly safe. Nice, Spread Needle. Congratulations, Dango. Just talking about that item. This is where I got my first Spread Needle, my first three Heavenly Arms, and I think all my Swordsman lore were all from this quest, but slightly different IDs. Well, I'm getting bullied a little hard here. Need this guy to get away from me. Thank you, Ramar Rabarda. You put in the work on that one. Okay, I think one more wave and they'll start to spawn. So just be careful. So I'm just gonna make sure to stay full screen. There are like specific enemies you could kill to spawn them. Okay, one more set of waves. That's premature. But basically, it's just kind of oops all Indie Belra right at the end. So I'm managing to stay away from the group, which is good. So I don't think most of them will target me. The thing is, think of it this way, there's actually two sets of waves in here. So eventually, if we kill enough of one group, we can speed them up to the Indie Bell Rose, which is actually bad. I'm glad we're killing them mostly evenly here. I'm gonna do my best to snipe these. Oh, there's more of these in intermediate waves than I recall. Not a big deal either way. I mean, I'm happy for more Spread Needle. Honestly, XP starts to become pretty good in this room most of the time. Here we go. Now they're starting to come. Beware, chat. They're going to be popping in every wave. So we're up to three so far. Uh, six. <laughs> um, nine. It's a lot of Indie Belra. So again, as long as I don't really line up with anybody, which I don't think I am, uh, this is kind of like heavenly arms heaven. <laughs> this this is like the the wave you go to fight to. You actually get okay XP a second. I think with a little bit of an RBR boost, this quest is actually worth doing, even if you don't need the items. Just because of like rooms like this on IDs that get something from Indie Belra are just so silly. There we go. We survived. It is much more kind than the second floor. The second floor is, if you're looking for Chaos Bringer stuff, which sometimes has the people spread needle, it technically has them, but I would recommend for the most part if you're a newer player, you bail here. Take take a relatively easy clear, gives you like about 60,000-ish XP. But uh, we're, we're gonna show what happens if you continue further. The quest may or may not become a giant pain. It may or may not have awful poison rooms. It makes you earn that completion. On the plus side though, claws. Yeah, this floor I don't remember as much because I just chose to get there. What if I'm natural 15 dark? Okay. Sadly no hit, but still good spread at all. Or excuse me, good that it is a spread needle might be more accurate to say.
Uh, I think it's time to uh, introduce them to Frozen Shooter so our lives are not miserable. Thank you, Frozen Shooter with Hit. I will never miss with you. Oh no, these enemies. So yeah, there's a couple places we can go. I know one of them is just kind of a fake out. I want to say north is optional. I'm going to check out the north briefly. Team could go wherever they want. I'll meet up with the team later. The way I kind of remember, I think there are warps I can take from here to go to other parts. But it has been a while since I played this part. First floor I got down. This floor, hmm. Oh no. So we'll let Hellcleave explore on his own for a little bit. The quest for the most part is not too, too bad. Uh-oh. Rip our buffs. <laughs> I'm in danger. Uh, I'm gonna put a Ryuker here. So if Hellcleave wants to find us and then come back later, we can do that. Or we'll go to Hellcleave, one of the above. So I'm just gonna confirm, is this treasure or warp? It is a warp. Uh, I think this is still treasure. I think this could lead to- oh boy. I think this could lead to something interesting. To do this so Dango doesn't die. Come on, Roberta. Why are you failing me? I believed in you. There we go. Oh, Cleve has found us. <laughs> the sad venture of the Dell Sabres. So, yeah, I think this could, in theory, lead us to a main path. But you mostly come over here for the items. Okay, so this doesn't go back to the main path at all. That's all I wanted to verify. So let's go back to where Help Leave is. We saw the button. Please make sure to hit that button. Otherwise, you're in Nightmare Town. So we'll take my warp and then we'll go we'll follow Help Leave, I think. I'm assuming... Ooh, they actually spawned more enemies here. That's nice. So at least when you come back to the warp that we placed here, we got some kills. How convenient. Ah. Actually, Hellcleave is running. Maybe Hellcleave did not take a warp. Rip. <laughs> oh well, take that time save. The general rule of thumb is if you have to go and hit a force switch, it's not going to lead to progress. So we could take a little detour if we want to. Your destination is basically to the right. We actually saw it briefly. I love that we could just go through the, the switch door if we want. I guess I should see what's through the switch door. Presumably just treasure, right? Oh, another warp. Okay. I don't recall this one. Where does this one put me? Does it put me at the top of the other room? It does. Um, I guess I'll clear it for the items. Oh, or it'll be, of course it'll be those enemies, the worst ones to clear. Well, if you needed some Death Gunners. Leave me alone. We're gonna go with a hard go away. <laughs> what do you think, chat? No, I don't want to deal with this. No, deal with the double frozen shooter. That is so sick. I'm alternating on them. Oh, they got alternated on. GG, get outplayed. And that was me locking down two targets with one frozen shooter. Kill you. I don't super need the XP. As long as we're clearing, we should be fine. Let me put away this dye fluid. <laughs> Slash consume it. Lost my buffs, but I can reapply mine here. I still do okay damage alone. Definitely want that egg though. So all that hard work to do what? Let's see where this leads me in the grand scheme of things. 
I'm hilariously not near any- Oh, I got baited by the poison. Aw. Uh, there's a couple of those later in the area. I didn't realize there was one over here. So there's just more treasure. I think I can open the way to this room for the team if I really want to. So I might as well just keep going. Can't believe I landed that shot. We'll take that though. Again, team's just kind of clearing on their own. I'm showcasing some of the side stuff. Ah, uh, your 108 hard accuracy. So I can still miss Del Saber. You're very evasive. Seriously. I went to go use items and then I realized somebody was mag blasting. That was really awkward. Uh I'm in trouble now due to that. That kinda sucks. Okay, that's fine. We got out of there. I eventually need to rebuff myself, but I don't think I have the opportunity. I'm being targeted super hard. Okay, so we're going to heal, rebuff, rebuff, then kill this... I was going to say kill this thing before the Darkbringer spawns, and then it spawned anyway. I remember there was one in this room. Give me one second. Sadly, our music stopped right in the middle of our quest. The Darkbringer for us is Monkey King Bar, which is a solid maybe option for hunters. Elk leaves at the last room. I'm still in the bonus room. I'm gonna put a TP down in my room as I get bullied. In case chat wants to help me clear this last room. I'm getting ultra trolled right now. Where is my Heaven Striker? There we go. Please perish. Alright, so where did this go? What was the what was the ultimate goal of this? This it should just lead to a warp, right? It does. Oh, the pick a path. Oh, I love this bullshit. <laughs> um. Oh, which one was it? It was. Was it this one? Oh, how Cleve and I went to the same one. There we go. <laughs> My advice to you: don't pick the other ones. You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to know. You're going to be lost forever. Oh, man. So anyway, now we're back at the main room. Oh, that was... <laughs> okay, so now I'm back here, so I completed the bonus. So I'm going to go ahead and put a warp down so I can uh, go back to wherever you guys came from. Okay, so I'm seeing the twirl near Helk leaves. That's such a path. Okay, we need to make sure to step on that button. So basically, if you look at the mini-map for them, they basically just made a big circle after the warp. That's all they really did. Yeah, this room... Oh, okay, it's not quite the ending I thought it was. This room is still difficult. It's not, a. Uh... Which one has the poison room at the end? It's not this one. The poison room is like a self-contained room. This is just a wide-open treasure room, which does have a lot of chaos bringers because there are 12 in this quest, at least, for what I recall. There's going to be at least three or four more after this. Bell sabers are fine. Getting some ruined boxes as a reward is fine. And we just have a simple, small room into the exit teleport. So this is indeed the final room. Damn, the 1200 damage. That was definitive. Oh, please don't hit me. <laughs> I put my HP so low. Like, please don't. I'm so sad. Nice of Enig. Yeah, let's try to clear this out for the crowd. This is a little tricky for forces still. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of varying damage types that need to be dealt. So sometimes you just need to brute force it. It's 
So we'll do our best to just clear it. So again, not another run I'd recommend for leveling per se, but not a bad number of kills in the quest itself. I'll open these so I can get the treasures later. Spin my Resta, heal a little more. Both of us missed. Kill him with Heaven Striker. Voltan drop, nice. Oh, we're definitely we're definitely using Rabarda. We're stalling. We're stalling. There we go. Nice charge arm. Just try to help Dan go a little. Yeah, the, these final rooms are mostly fine. They're not, like, overtuned. There's, like, enough that you could still enjoy yourself. Which I can't say about some of the other quests. Some of their final- oh, no. Some of their final rooms are a little bad. I think we're getting close to the end. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy I healed. Save me, Trimate. You're my only hope. I did not juke correctly there. Oh, Monkey King Bar just dropped. Speaking of rares. Did you have one of those, Dango? Oh, I don't have room for it. I like the fact that they have doubles. So it could kind of help for early game players, depending on how they're using it. You have one with no hit. Yeah, this one has a little bit of dark, a little bit of native, but no hit, sadly. I'm a little sad none of us saw the heavenly arms, not gonna lie. I just heard a just sea drop. Goodbye, evade material. Yeah, we know we're not done yet. Hmm. You'll know we're done, it should announce. But yeah, there's like little reprieves <laughs> that it goes back to it. Oh gosh, leave me alone. <gasps> I got the freeze. Double KO. All right, I'm using a tri-fluid again. Again, for rum- oh no. <laughs> this feels final wave-ish to me. I don't think there's anything I could have done without a... a freeze trap or something. Maybe a Rabarda. I will face tank that all day, let's go. There we go, now the mission's complete. Get that power material. So many kills here. So yeah, this is a quest that's mostly pretty fun in RBR. I would say keep an eye out for this one in particular with RBR. It has so many applications either for the first floor or the second floor. The bonus rooms are mostly ignorable. I would say only maybe the first floor's bonus rooms are worth it. I just figured I'd show it off for people that don't go the normal routes. So we'll put away Monkey King Bar. Although I could just give it to Dango. I don't have any interest in it because I have a stronger bar already. I have one that I think is like 20 hit. Gave it to Dango. Let's see. It's 15% native. So we'll pump it up to 25 native, 15 dark. Toriel's asking you to do more runs. Of course we are, Toriel. Would you like to join us? We'll be doing a very quick reset run and then more serious runs after that. And if you don't want it, Dango, it could go to Toriel. <laughs> Okay, Toriel, you're more than welcome to join us. So your decision. I will give it to you in a second, though. Uh, there it is. If Tiki wants in, he can take my spots as healthy. Is Tiki there? I didn't see him in the chat. Maybe he's in just lurking. Let's 
get some items. So we're going to showcase a very small episode 2 selection. It's not going to be very long. Don't worry, chat. We're, we're not doing a full run of this. Not, not even when I do this for items do I bother. Is there anything else I'm just thinking before we dedicate ourselves to one small quest in episode 2? Is there anything else that's worth running? I mean, I guess you could do Kabui runs in theory. I, I, I don't know. That doesn't feel like something beginners would run. I think I'm going to ignore that then. I don't think any of these other items are really worth it. Tiki's chat didn't come up on stream. I don't even see it in the list. Oh, you mean ex ex except for the watch streak. Rip. Rip, Tiggy. I see it now in the other chat. I see what you mean. I think as it counts as a Twitch notification, it doesn't pop up in the main chat on stream. I was looking at the on stream chat. Rip, Tiggy. So yeah, we're gonna do what we call the, the good old miracle reset. I promise you it's very short. It involves doing like none of the quests and it is hilariously dumb. So Chad, you ready for a dumb meme run? <laughs> it, it does give you V502. It's actually not even that bad in terms of speed. This is like the only one I could think of. I looked over Green ID again and I cannot think of anything else to do with them in episode two. I usually avoid it like the plague. But there's exactly one run that you could do that would be useful. Tutorial is in, Dango's in. Tiggy, did you want to do a joke run before we did episode 4? Well, I say joke, but it, it does give you V502. Cool, cool. Nice of Dango to give the hand-me-down. Okay, so here's my recommendation. If you got Frozen Shooter, great. If you got Freeze Traps, great. We're killing exactly seven targets, and that's it. <laughs> we are not planning on remotely cleaning this quest out. So for those that don't know what I'm talking about, we're going to be doing a quest called Massive Attack E Galdaval. Now, Lost Charge Vulcan also technically has a lot of uh, miracles. But I don't really... It's the RBR for the week. It is good. You could do it for Miracles. It's not the ID I would play for that quest. So be aware, if that's in rotation and green is your only, only ID, by all means, try and Lost Charge Vulcan with a group. But I feel like you're going to get more out of it with purple and white. So I feel like it'd be misleading to say, like, oh, this is the quest. It just, I just don't think it makes sense. This one is distinctly, distinctly... Distinctly Ramar and Green ID related. So here's the deal, chat. We're gonna count together. There are seven. Seven murder flowers. We kill them, we leave. That's it. We don't do anything else. Prep your frozen shooters, prep your demons. Pray for freeze trap. Stun lock with pistol if you can. We're going sniping today. Potentially, I think we could do it in... I think it's only like three or four rooms. It's a very short quest. If we're very lucky, we will get a V502 from this run. So keep in mind, miracles drop at a... What is the exact rate? We'll find it eventually. Yeah, don't worry. Hunters don't have those. You have freeze traps, though. They have a... 1 in 1024 chance. Yeah, Monkey King Bar is Devils, I think. I think it's not quite Demons, unfortunately. It's still pretty good. But just use Pistol. Does everybody use the console, please? Okay. So... Yeah, there we go. Keep mashing until you have no dialogue. And we should be good to go. Okay. Cheers to deal. We're gonna start counting. So, so, none here. If you got Hell, use it. Otherwise, whatever freeze a couple of them just to make life easy. The graphic of this area can get a little annoying, but we'll clear out the first couple rooms, and then we're in full-on miracle killing spree. So I need to make sure between every wave, because I forget where they spawn, other than there's like three in the final room, that I have frozen shooter ready. And if you have freeze traps, just in there near you, panic freeze trap and shoot the freeze trap. <laughs> 
Just full on panic. You have permission to panic. Okay, so, so no barrels, which I'll just shut down with some freeze. Get wrecked. Waiting for them to spawn at the far end of the room. So again, there's like, it's, it's not a bad beginning of the quest. It's just a little after this, it becomes Sniper's Alley. And I feel bad for the non-rangers. So double gibbles, what does it mean? It means we're gonna freeze one. So we're just gonna just pinpoint them down. And just absolutely shut this down. So I need help with the other miracle. Team hit the other miracle, thank you. Thank you, team. That's two down, five more to go. The run is two, -fifth, two sevenths of the way over. So there should be a lot here. I'm gonna try to cover the left side of the area with my sniper and team will just kind of fill in the gaps. So I'm gonna rely on freeze so that way Hellcleave can demon consistently. So he and I are working kind of in tandem. I'll kind of freeze the target that needs to die. <laughs> That's all that needs to happen. So get ready, there's like one... I think there's a left and right one that spawn and a front and back one if I remember correctly. And then there's one in the next area. Nice level up. Okay, here's the front and back one. I'm gonna hit the left side, chat shit up the other. Rip Dango. So as a reminder, Murder Flower does not care about your levels, does not care about your equipment. It only wants to kill you. Priority number one. <laughs> For people that have not played episode two before, know that is the most deadly thing known to man and it will kill the entire party if gone unchecked. So if you see it, panic, freeze, trap, freeze, shoot. Oh no, I got fro I got frozen by my own frozen shooter. Okay, sniper alley, sniper alley. Nice stun luck with the Razan. I'm gonna get a couple freezes in. I got a couple freezes in, so chat us a chance. I think that was three, it was two, three, two. So I think that was all of them. And that's the run. I think I crowd, yeah. Yeah, that's the run. GG, you did the run. <laughs> that's the whole run. So you do this over and over and over again, for clarity, to uh, get P502s for Green ID. It's very specific to them. That is, that is like, to me, a quintessential Green ID run. It's such a dumb run, but it's beautiful. Well, anyway, we're going to do longer runs, of course. So let's see. Green ID benefits very heavily from... Honestly, anything with a lot of zoos. So we'll do a little bit of massive attack B, and then we'll do, what would be another good quest? I guess something heavy with Pyragoron. So I guess we could do that one underground quest, new mop up operation three, which would make it good, but see yellow ID for the boss related quests. Both of those are valid. Although sadly you only get a Centurion ability, which is decent. But you're not going to be grinding that as... You're not going to be grinding pod as much. You're going to be doing more of the standard episode 4 boss clear quest. So let's do massive attack B. And I'll bring in the, the Ramar. That way we can showcase some things more specific to green ID. So basically your dream goal with green ID is... Does it have a lot of zoos? Yes. Happiness. They get V101 from Zeus, which is an endgame unit. If you happen to be also fighting Dwarf on Eclairs on surface, you could get uh, Cannon Rouge from them. Otherwise, their surface rares are okay. Their underground rares are where it's at, but we can showcase if you want to do some V101s. Zoo equals happiness, pretty much. The more zoos you see, the happier you are. Unless you're like a hunter with no guns, then you're very sad. So we'll do 4B, is specifically is very zoo heavy versus like dwarf on heavy in C. But this is another run I think players should know. This is also the quest that you should be spamming to level if you have a somewhat strong group in lower difficulties. The quest XP here should be, and I quote, stupid, so we should get a lot of XP. Even if we can't clear the quest, we're gonna go as far as we can. We want to at least get to the lava room underground. If we don't clear the quest beyond that, I'm okay with it. So we're playing with varied experience. But just be aware, this quest is so, so fun and so good. 
This was one of the quests we recommended for new players to learn. We're showcasing the full quest versus just a quick clear of it. And why the warp matters. See, a little bit of native and dark is a pretty good combination, honestly, for uh, episode 4, because there's so many native creatures. And then aside from Astark, which is a beast, uh, a lot of the underground is just pure dark. So I got Excalibur, so get wrecked. <laughs> this time I brought melee. <laughs> Why the word matters in SA video? Nice photon crystal! You'll need those potentially to add hit percentage on certain things. Or they'll be nice gamble items, we'll see. Insert cook fig right here on the video thumbnail, oh no. See, you can see we're putting in the work with Excal. There we go, chat. I don't have to remember to bring a melee weapon because this is his Excalibur forever. <laughs> he will never unequip it under any circumstance. It is forever with him. I do have Slicer Fanatic for the underground, but generally speaking, we're not going to be fighting a ton of Gerdabulus. Gerdabulus are not necessarily your friend for green ID. You mostly just care about zoos, Pyrogorons. Honestly, that's about it. Everything else is like, I don't really want to be fighting a million Astarks. Dwarfons are okay to fight. If you do gotta fight them, you know, bring a Slicer or whatever. And paralysis, maybe. Nicely done. So we're coming up to a Rappy Satellite Lizard Wave, which gives Healthy like a million years to set up Gafoe spawns. So the upcoming zoo should be easy for us to focus on. So we as rangers and hunters will be looking for the big bird. So we'll we'll chop a couple of these down if we want to, but ultimately Hellcleave is going to murder all of them. We could slightly expedite the process. With good positioning, Hellcleave can hit the satellite lizards down by quite a lot of HP. You see that they got half health. So once we're done clearing the furthest ones from the fireball, and you'll see I'll not I'll even purposely not kill some of them and just move to the next targets. The reason I want to do that in particular is just from the standpoint that at some point the Gafoe will hit them. So I'll just let it last to touch them. So again, all those zoos are potentially endgame drops for us. I'm gonna go ahead and Rafoe that just and make sure the Rappies get hit. It would be funny if we saw, like, a, a Pazuzu. I would actually call absolute shenanigans if that did happen. I couldn't see the damage numbers, but I knew I was hitting Pazuzu because the damage was going up so rapidly. Like, there's no way it's anything other than that. Okay, so here's where the route is going to change a lot. There's going to be a lot of Pazuzus. We're going to play Operation Protect Hellcleave. Because uh, if Hellcleave gets knocked over, the zoos are going to have their way with the party. I can maybe put out a safety Kafoe, but I'm, I'm not going to be able to do too much here. So I'm going to wait a little bit for Hellcleave on this one. If I see the zoo die bombing, I could just like regular Foey. Something like this. Put out a couple of safety ones for the future. Oh, interesting that chat's able to hit the zoo from there. Must be very desynced. For me, it's like hilariously out of range. Like, I can't even hit it with Yashmanikov, 9000M, out of range. I'm gonna get lasered here, I think. That's fine. We died for our sins. At least I clipped him a little with my, uh, Gatling gun before I got knocked down. Goodbye, Zoo. Oh, getting the photon drop from Zoo, that's brutal. So many, do so many zoos will die this day. So yeah, Hellcleave will have a very, very good position to stack some uh, Gafoeys. So I'll put a safety one out just because. But essentially our destination is the rock. Make sure to not stand in the green area, but make sure you're standing a little more to the right. So I would honestly not pull the satellite lizards too, too far. I would make sure they come back towards Hellcleave a little bit. Let them come. We'll kill these. I'll kill this one and get ready to uh, 
go around here. The reason we don't want to get too close to the rock is the Dwarfon is going to spawn there at some point. And it could do a lot of damage. Ooh, Venek. Take those at some point. And because Hellcleave is allowed to stack here forever, um, he's going to get a lot of free damage on everything here. This also interrupts the uh, Dwarfon when it does appear. Actually, I probably wouldn't 9,000 M this. I'm not going to bother targeting the satellite lizards. I'm just assuming they're dead. We mostly just have to take care of the zoos that they go to bounds. Kind of like that. So if it's a dwarf on a Claire, we're happy, but regular dwarf ons are just disappointing. We want to eat our desserts. <laughs> Ooh, power material. Where was the power material? Oh, it must have been back in the other group when the Rappies ran. Damn. I'm not going back for that. I don't want it that badly. So here we have a lot of Dwarfons that are going to appear against the fence. So we're going to work our way forward as Hunters and Rangers. And Hellcleave is just going to spam spells forever. Hellcleave will be fine. Hellcleave will interrupt most of the initial Dwarfons. I actually do like as a force to switch to Rafoe here. Because funny enough, if you Rafoe like the zoos that spawn, it stunlocks the entire crowd. So you can see like where the zoo is die bombing. If this zoo got Rafoe, it would literally hit the entire group. It's kind of unfair. I think they did kind of think about that to some extent to make like Rafoe a little better, which is kind of interesting. <sighs> that zoo went out of sh normal shot range. So mostly just need to make sure we bully the Dorfon. So close. I just needed like some other ATP source. Nicely killed though. Again, we'll freeze kind of high priority targets. We'll gun down the other ones. Oak Cleave will help interrupt the zoos that spawn after this, slash the Dwarfon. Did I seriously get double lasered? That's unfortunate. I didn't die though, but. <laughs> I, felt, I felt a little targeted, is what I was saying. It felt a little unnecessary. And sadly, no Pazuzus to show off. But hey, this is a lot of V101, so we're still happy to see it. Look at them flip, flip and flutter in the sky. That one tends to get stuck a lot of reason, a lot of the time. I don't really know why. Unfortunately, since they changed to Phineas so that the enemies always drop it at their spawn location, it's actually reasonable to get zoo drops now. Prior to that, I would never have recommended this quest. They go out of bounds so easy. It's ridiculous. This room is a lot of fun for Gafoe spam. I guess I could switch to Excalibur, honestly. I don't really want to teleport them with my shotgun, so I'm just going to switch to melee. Because I feel like that would just disorient people that are playing. Oops. Help if I aim. Better. Nice double hit. Oh, nice double hit again. That was satisfying. Anyway, now now for the massacre of the satellite lizards. Rip. These quest series also have a weird perk in the upcoming room where after several waves, you have to just arbitrarily pick a path, and based off of whether it's A, B, or C, the door you have to go to changes. I don't know why they chose to do that. I that's one of the things in the quest where I'm like. But why? And I don't mean like it's the door you go to to make progress. It's it's the wrong door. You have to purposely pick a wrong door and then it will advance. It's very weird. So what I'm going to try to do is go to that wrong door early so we don't need to worry about it. It, it presents a very awkward flow. Tiki says zookeepers. That's good. I like that. So yeah. So if we see that door in front of us... I eventually need to go down there, but I'll help the group with this area first. That was a nasty double hit with Excalibur. It was like actually disgustingly good. It ended, Marissa. Uh, we're going to charge arm a little bit. This time I don't care if they teleport to me. We need to just do some damage. So I'm going to start walking down here. Uh, Actually, I need to do one more wave.
Nice freeze trap. That let me basically clear out that entire wave. GG. Good teamwork. So yeah, I'm just gonna wait here prematurely. I'll get buff later if I really need it. Yeah, as long as we stay roughly in the middle, we should be fine. So I gotta touch the door. There we go. So I actually walked past the trigger by accident, but that's fine. At least we got to showcase. There's a very awkward pause if no one is there. I'm going to rebuff myself and slowly get closer to everybody else. A little healing and defense here. Thank you. So we gotta be careful, because Hellcleave is gonna get demoned at some point. But hey, I brought Slicer Fanatic. So I should be able to wail on that thing real easy once we're done with these enemies. You're like, freeze trap, get off me. Nice. Perish. Ooh, 2,000 damage. Disgusting. Wow, that is the most aggressive I've ever been on a Marissa. Sadly, I think the other one is a little bit far from us. I just freeze you solid so I can shoot you to death. How's that? That's good. Let's use the Slicer Fanatic here. I have so much accuracy, I just land it. <laughs> just... I don't even need to SN glitch from our broken chat. <laughs> what, a d what, a, what a character. Anyway. Good to pick that power material up. I'm not needed there. Uh, I'll take the defense material. So anyway, we gotta go through the bottom door because like makes no sense. This is where the quest mostly becomes very focused on Rafoe because uh, the enemies are just too spread apart to Kafoe at all. So I usually stand on like the middle bridge here and snipe each of the targets. The big problem is, it wants us to split into two groups. I definitely cannot solo that alone. I'm gonna need somebody up there with me. There we go. So we have to deal with the Goron Detonators, which is a little spooky. I'll freeze you. I don't want you teleporting. Alright, team's got the front. Okay, let me cover the back then. We switch roles slightly, but that's fine. Yeah, the Goron Detonator is kind of a weird scenario. If you're playing very hard mode, Rezond actually kills both of them pretty quickly, but not quite an ultimate, so front usually needs some assistance there. Here's our assistance. So we're in the the, the zigzag room. This one is has a lot of zoos towards the end of it. So if we get to this point, it's pretty good. If we get further, it's nice, but not super needed. Yeah, this quest gives pretty good XP. You can see we're getting 151 XP a second, which again is comparable to real quests from like TTF potentially or RT. And we're just kind of a ragtag crew, not hyper optimized. At least I'm not. <laughs> like I have good gear, don't get me wrong, but I'm not like challenge mode, like S ranks and I'm using my very average 50 hits. Okay, so I think what I want to do is Yashminikov these. Oh, I should have specified the tutorial. There's a couple more waves they have to go through. I just decided not to be where the enemy was, that's all. I'm setting up for the next wave. Let me combo kill you. Oh, what's that? You can't teleport to me? Oh, did I abuse terrain? Oh, how rude of me, chat. I would never use terrain to make sure they could never hit me. I I would never exploit them like that, chat. That's just rude. Get rid of these guys real quick. Thank you, Yashminikovs, for letting me snipe the team. That zoo is gonna get me damaged, I think. I need help. Burst is on me. Okay, never mind. Zoo decided to fight you guys for some reason. I'll take that. Listen, the zoo could have very easily bullied me. It just chose not to for some reason. Nice. 
Again, these were an absolute nightmare before the Affinia update that put them in bounds. You can see there's so many ways they could be out of bounds over the lava pits. You would normally just never get those items. Anyway, if Yashminikov to basically full screen control. Oh, Dango with the V101. Congratulations, Dango. Nice. Just casual in game unit. You know, it's fun. Just Dango things. That wild Dango. Yeah, that's a fantastic unit. Heavenly Battle will suit you for a majority of the game, but you'll eventually swap that out for either Blue Adoshi Violet Nimadal, which is an armor that grants the same bonus, or you'll do V101, which gives slightly better stats. This quest is also really good to learn for Blue ID. I've been playing very hard, just for clarity. But for actually running it in Ultimate, I think Green ID runs it probably a little more than others. Just from the fact that if all you want is V101, which, which is what we got, uh, this is the quest to do. However, there's better quests to do underground. They are noticeably a bit tougher. They might be a little rough for Toriel, but we'll try to get Toriel through. So we tried to be somewhat merciful to level him a bit before then. Look at that damage I could do. The accuracy? Mmm. Oh, off by three? So sad. Uh, time to slicer. <laughs> Every single slicer hit. Oh my gosh. That poor Gurdabulu said no chance. I actually just like times eight demoned him. GG. Completely outplayed. So believe it or not, we're almost done with the quest, so we're looking likely to actually complete it. So I'm going to go ahead and give Gerdabulo a hug. I don't think he's going to like my gift, though, because I brought a welcoming present for him. Oh, he actually shocked me out of it. There we go. So my rule of thumb is if you like to draw an imaginary line like where I'm standing, if you're in front of that imaginary line, the zoos will die bomb. If you're behind that line, or excuse me, they will die bomb if you're behind the line. If you're too far forward, you will get lasered. So see how they die bomb because most of the team is on that line. You want to make sure that you're not any further than Hellcleave. Hellcleave is honestly a little close, but it's still doable. So if he were to spam Gafoe, for example, instead of them just shooting us and lasering us, which is what can happen, uh, they have to die bomb. So you can see, like, we could exploit the distance in the room in order to force them to die bomb. So if you're wondering how to manipulate the zoos, I don't know how many people know that you can... In this room in particular, it's very easy to test and play around with it. But just don't walk past, like, this part all the way across, and they, they have to die bomb in order to reach you. It's very exploitable. You no longer have to worry about lasers. And yeah, they will just die bomb into potentially oncoming Gafoe, etc., and just get absolutely dumpstered. So again, none of us are really far forward. So you, as you can see, the team's a little too far over to the right there, so that's why the one on the right did not die bomb. But the other one was forced to die bomb since nobody was lined up with it. The line's a little bit of a diagonal since they spawn a little close on one side, but it is a good visual cue. You could get a lot of practice th with that when leveling people. So having played like the blue force, I'm just like, yeah, I know exactly where to stand. This quest is very silly in the sense that you beat it. And like, you see, technically it's like all enemies have been defeated. But notice the timer is still ticking down. That is such a jerk move on the quest. I don't know why the timer doesn't pause, honestly. So the way to pause the timer is if you come this way, there are sets of crystals on either side of this very goofy shaped room. I don't even know how to describe the shape of this room other than goofy. It's like it's got floppy ears or something. But anyway, if you have a fireball, you could try to just like hit it. It's like almost, I guess it's almost like the Star Wars symbol. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. But on these little tips, there's things you could collect. But anyway, to make sure that you get your reward of tickets, just use the console. Yeah, we cleared that with plenty of time to spare. That was pretty good. You can talk to the other guy to see how many tickets you have. How many tickets do I have? I have no idea. Yes, tickets possessed. 19. Okay, that's not many. 
so up next we're gonna do I guess a slightly harder quest for Heaven Strikers. There are a lot of really solid Episode 4 quests, so honestly, I would definitely kind of frame it that Green ID is like the god tier of Episode 4 to some extent. 81 tickets, wow. I think 255 is the max and I've hit it before by accident. And it made me sad because it doesn't remember that you should have more. How's our money looking? Oh, I'm still semi-poor. It's probably okay. Let's go put away some items. So the upcoming quest is recommended for only high-level uh, gear only, but I do think it is kind of a quintessential green quest. So if you want to do boss rushes, again, I would check out our playthrough on yellow ID because you would play them pretty much the same way, uh, start to finish. But let's do one that we also sometimes do on purple ID. Let's get ready to hunt some Pyrogorons. And I always gotta double check the name of the quest because I forget all the time. New Mob Op Operation 3. Technically I could do the really horrendously long Lost Spirit Striker, but I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that one is like 167 if I remember correctly. That one is a, uh, that's an endurance on the spirit quest. Yeah, we're gonna be happy we leveled, uh, Torio a little bit for this one. This one is a bit difficult. I would recommend only for, as I said before, kind of like mid-game hunts versus like early level 80 stuff. So we're kind of breaking the quest diagram, but I do think this is important because sometimes you could play this on a lower difficulty, which is important. This potentially goes very fast with some minor buffs. Let's sort a little bit. Let's give Toriel a couple minutes. Double check how we're doing on the soundtrack here. Ooh, still like over 50 minutes left. What I like to see in my soundtracks. <laughs> At least while playing PSO length. I think I selected the right one. Ooh, Toriel at above a thousand HP. That'll be useful. So you can see we're on a little bit of a time limit. So go team go. It's murder in time. Go wild. Look at me using Excalibur sacrifice. That was a little risky. Nice freeze, though. I think I got a little lucky there, I'm not gonna lie. So we'll get a little time extensions, depending on how we're doing. Healing up. Let's continue. Time to run. So this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna try to bring out as much damage as I can. But yeah, just be mindful of your health. Hell Cleave will help heal every now and then. But if you feel like you're getting ultra low, just be wary. This is a very hard room. Do not feel bad if you die. But the XP per second here is second to basically almost none in episode four, to be honest with you. But the difficulty is worth it. rid of these, help hopefully with these. <laughs> the Raffi took my shotgun shot because it stood up. Nice. Thank you, Charge Arm.
I'm gonna kill the Goron Detonator. Kill the other things now. Nice freeze trap. Now I can land the charge shots. <laughs> I just went berserk with that, uh, with the freeze. I was like, wait a minute, I actually get to land these? Nice, thank you, Toriel. Appreciate it. You can see the XP is almost 200 XP a second. Insane. Insane for a non-boss quest. Completely insane. But as long as you have a healer, you can mitigate it a little bit. So again, more of a seasoned approach. Uh, one, one does not casually do this quest. But I think we got enough power with us. Hugh cast naturally has some power. So I believe we gotta go further to the south to continue here. I did miss Amiga level 27, but uh, I'm, I don't think I have room for it unless I get rid of stuff. So anyway, let's continue onwards. Just be careful about your HP. Which is very silly to use Berserk, honestly, with it. Like, Red Ring healed me a little tiny bit, but it's not gonna outheal this damage. So eventually there's going to be enemies further into the room, but basically some people can stay on the right side, or, excuse me, well, right to us, but on the left side of the mini-map, because that's where we gotta go. And then some of us can just hunt the furthest targets. We're just going to slowly get further and further in this room. I'm going to heal the group as like a little booster. One of these. Go for this guy, because he's so far from everything else. Heal the group. Head back to the south. Up and help leave as much as we can here. Again, this is like a really great way to level once you have some decent gear. So kind of at the tail end. Some people will run this quest as a group, so maybe you can potentially get in a group with this. Yeah, the XP is phenomenal here. Then after that, I'll defer to help leave if there's anything that I'm forgetting. Or what I would consider quintessential green ID quests. I think TTF is pretty much the primary one, but there's some fun little ones we could do. Rip that Megid though. It's not level 29, so I don't care. Oops. So I always go to the left here because it's a slightly shorter route. We tend to ignore the healing circle because it's a waste of time. Unless you are like truly out of items, but yeah, usually it's not worth stopping. Now Hellcleave here is going to get quite an advantage on us. <laughs> He's so far ahead. We'll catch up to him. Oh, Hellcleave didn't have to wait. That's fine. That's not what I meant by that. We're going to go in. Ooh. Let me heal here so I don't die. But at least there's the mix of like damage rooms and non-damage rooms. Not the whole quest is like that. Oh, I missed the sacrifice that would have killed. Kill these. All we ever really need is about two minutes to clear a room, so we still got a decent timer left. We're a little past the halfway point, I think. So I think we're doing fine for what it is. Now in the middle of this room, there's like a little hook curve. We basically want to protect Hellcleave as he approaches this, as where those lizards just spawned, this middle one is where you want to stand as a force. So if you're playing as the force and supporting people, the Gafoe here is so strong because every single enemy just takes so much Gafoe damage. I would say in single player, I think Rafoe is still a little better in most scenarios. But just be aware, especially if you're playing with weaker forces, stacking the Gafoe there is so powerful. I'll heal the group every now and then. There we go. Goodbye, Satellite Lizard. 
So I'm trying not to teleport the enemies because I like where they are. I don't feel like the group's in danger. Nice level up for Toriel. That's one way to recover your traps. Operation Protectile Cleave. Nicely done. So we're gonna ignore the northern door. That's basically if there's items you would go north and that would warp you to the little mini island down to the south. But yeah, we're, we're cruising along. <laughs> Then I think after this, we'll try to get maybe some parasitic gene flow for the two of the people here. Both of them want it. It is the endgame item. I cannot believe that freeze actually did something. My freeze, not Hell Cleaves. <laughs> Hell Cleaves I expected. My my sad little Ramar one. Like wow, it actually worked. Like the Ramar one works more often than not, which is kind of nice. It's always a little joy to see the Ramar finally doing something with his, his terrible, terrible MST. He's one of the few characters I might actually consider TP materials on. It's, I actually use his spells all the time. Not so much in single player, but... Multiplayer, especially quests like these. Just healing up the group. We're just gonna go north for a little bit. So I still have seven minutes on the clock. So we managed to freeze it despite clearing several rooms. So I consider that a success. We still have some opportunity to build it up again. Slow down again. Oh well. Yeah, I'd say this quest is probably a little better suited for raw casts and hue casts mixed with one force. Just because of the fact that they can do tons of freeze traps is a little more useful than my ability to do demons. Just because there's not really a lot of... It's not like there's a million Gertabulus or something. What a weird way to end that song, but okay. We're taking off, apparently. Melee you, melee you. So we're in almost the final area. We gotta go through one more set of doors, and then we're gonna get a long wrap about rune. So it's looking very likely that we're gonna clear it at this rate. So again, we're sitting at almost 118,000 experience. Pretty good XP across the board. Vent egg, nice. I want that for sure. So we're just going in chat, just going in. Yeah, these guys are kind of in an awkward spot for Kapoe, so I think I I think I approve it hopefully use Refoe there completely. They're just like slightly too far. Like if you stack it it's nice, but then after that it's just like they're just not gonna hit it in a reasonable time. I'm gonna do my best to land as many sacrifices as I can, and then die die with honor. Try to keep Hulkleaf safe. The cost of HP. There we go. There we go. Plus the kept away from him. Okay, so six minutes, but we're pretty much on the home stretch now. Lots of event eggs for the chat. Hello.
so we're coming up to a nice little warp here. Don't think it matters which side, fortunately, for this one, as long as we get there. It does make you walk quite a bit. It's like, hold on, do you have any timer left? Let's drain your timer a little with this long walk. This walk is a little rude. The red sword's coming out. I think I'm going to charge arm this if I can. Get off of me. Oh, nice freeze trap. I got a whole bunch of them off of that. Thank you. Scalibur time for sure. Oops, out of range. I do want to make sure I hit the Rappies for egg chances. Oh, that's an evade material. I thought it was a mine material. Got excited for a second. So yeah, home stretch, only a couple rooms left. Through the hallway. So basically half the timer remains, and now that we're through the healing area, we're I am almost there. Team is in the final room. So we're doing really good. Good job, team. Time to murder. This quest is a lot of fun with semi-decent gear. The timer will be a little tighter for people that aren't quite excaliburing everything, but then again, if you got a lot of casts, they kind of make up for it with freeze traps and confuse traps. Ooh, I like this spawn pattern. Use a couple of charge shots here. Tell them to teleport into this. Get out of here, idiots. Nice event egg. Wow, how Cleave just racking up the event eggs. He's like, hold on. And a photon drop? Jeez. Almost 165,000 experience total so far. Again, phenomenal for a non-boss quest. Doing our best to murder our way forward. Always be swinging. I think he hasn't seen an egg drop in two days. The game is broken. I'm sorry, Tiggy. RBR might help, maybe. Otherwise, quests like these, when you kill so many enemies, inevitably, the bull curve. We got three minutes to finish the room. We're looking pretty good. Only need more for a five egg gamble. I'm so sorry, Tiggy. The gamble addiction is real. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and clean this guy up. I'm gonna slice our fanatic these two. I think that's the right play. Excellent choice. Killed both. GG. Yeah, unlike the other quest, this one at least pauses the timer for you. Okay, well, I'm gonna take the warp out. Good job, team. So many items dropped. 40 heat laser, you disgust me. That's fair. So yeah, is there anything else you can really think of that you would consider quintessential green? Other than just doing the standard pod and SF attack E, which we did in Yellow ID. Go see Yellow ID video. This one you can also do with purple, but there's so many here, you might as well just go for Heaven Striker. And there's an okay amount of zoos. At least there's some V101. Not a bad red ID quest too, for similar reasons. This is so good. Congrats again, Dangle, on the B101, though. Yeah, see, the problem is, like, Shurin. Shurin in green is kind of bad. Like, you could do it, but, like, White ID and Viridian are just so much better at the same quest. I was thinking about it, but, like, you if you look at it, they get literally, like, two items, that's it. At least White ID gets, like, a Jito and Red Handgun and other things. At least you could say, like, you're going for other rares. i consider that more of a white ID run. It's just P1 hunt for green, yeah. Exactly. 
Yeah, it's just one of those ones where, you know, we'll we'll mention it. We we don't super recommend it, but you could in theory get Shurin's that way. I would highly recommend switching IDs or considering going for Gurren with hit instead. But yeah, GG. So if there's no other quests, I guess we'll conclude with some of our classic series of quests. I can't think of anything I want to do other than, you know, unfortunately a lot of them are just going to be, I recommend doing, you know, Boss Rush Episode 4, which is, it, it is a really good quest. There are some event quests that are good with them, but, you know, if those event co quests come up, it's usually the best for every ID anyway that's hunting them. Yeah, I think that's about it. So let's formally conclude this little section. Mostly smaller quests. I did like the V. I did like the V502 reset. <laughs> that that one's funny. That one that one's very specific to this one. Let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Here's a small token, but it appears I have no inventory space. Um, you can have my defense material game. I don't need it. What are you gonna give me? Uh, the synthesizer, of course. Goodbye, defense material. Okay, so I guess we'll say goodbye to YouTube for this part. I can't think of any other major ones. I think we'll switch over to RT, potentially. Which I'll bring probably Rawcast or something? But anyway. So thank you again, YouTube, for watching to this point of the video of the bond. And if... Hopefully you like the content, and we'll uh, be continuing more in the next part with uh, some classic quests.